Hi there, it's John Spriggs, sometimes known as John the Nice Guy, and this is the third of my mentoring style screencasts. And this one I'm going to be talking about GitLab. So let's, uh, let's kick that one off. So this is GitLab. Uh, in fact, I'm just gonna quickly sign out of this. And then I'm going to sign in. So I've uh, stood up this instance of GitLab this morning. Uh, this is a um, domain name that I've got um, that just does IP address forwarding. Uh, so this is running on a machine in Azure, but you can stand it up anywhere. It's a self-hosted service. You can get GitLab hosted um, from gitlab.com. Uh, and GitLab is similar to GitHub uh, in that you can, um, you're, you're hosting, it's a hosted um, Git repository. So you can, you can run it on your own. Uh, infrastructure, for example. Uh, in this case, I'm going to sign in as John the Nice, uh, sorry, Spriggs J, I think is what I set this one up as. Uh, and I'm going to sign in with a password. So I've logged in uh, and I'm a member of a group called Default, uh, which I created as part of the standing up to prove that I could create groups. Uh, and uh, there's also a repository. So let's talk about some differences in terminology. In the Git world, um, uh, a repository is your basic grouping. Uh, so a repository is where all your code code gets committed to uh, and the history of the, all the changes that have been made. Uh, when you expand that out to the GitHub world, uh, you will see the term repository used there as well. And a repository in the GitHub terminology is, again, the, the Git repository where your code is stored, but it also includes uh, any um, issues and incidents like tickets. Um, uh, so things like, you know, um, uh, there's a problem when you click on widget X or um, uh, I want to change feature Y, things like that. Uh, you ha also have pull requests in the GitHub world. Um, pull requests are basically where somebody uh, has I either asked to, um, they've, they've been working on the repository that you're in uh, on a separate branch. So you might remember from the previous video that I did about um, Git, where I talked about branch um, and how you have a master branch and then you can create branches and then merge those branches into master. Uh, a merge request or a pull request in GitHub terminology um, <clears throat> is where you're asking that that, that, that that code import from one branch to another occurs. Um, the good thing about um, GitHub and GitLab is that you can actually merge uh, you can do that merge or pull request from um, a forked project or repository. So if I'm working on, um, if I'm working in this default group here, for example, uh, and I want to make a change to something here, I can fork this project, this, this repository into my own user account, make changes there and then create a merge request or a pull request back to the, um, the master, the, the originating project. Um, so what this means is, um, I'll show you an example of this in a second, um, but what this means is that the code that you write um, is distinct and separate from what's in that master branch. Um, and a lot of people that I know will tend to work on branches on their own project, on their own repositories, and then merge those changes into the master or into, a, into an integration branch um, on the uh, upstream project uh, and then request code reviews and things like that and then once they've got those code reviews in then that will be merged into master there's lots of different ways you can cut um, the merge request processes and stuff like that but um, i'm going to show you a very simple uh, chain of events so um, if you're working on a project with lots of people in github or gitlab uh, what you might want to do is actually move the ownership of that repository, uh, that, that project, from uh, your personal account into an organization. Uh, and an organization in uh, GitHub is basically just where you can have lots of people who have uh, commit permissions to that project. And it also means that if you get bored of working on, or if you, if you move away from working on that project, you can transfer the ownership of that organization, that, that group, to another person. Um, and it also means that um, if you um, if you want to add lots of people in, 
uh, you can control permissions on who's got rights to add, make changes, and who's got rights to do bits and pieces. Anyway, that's the terminology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create create a group, which is like an organization in GitHub. Uh, and then I'm going to create a repository inside that group uh, that's called a project, a project inside that group here. Uh, and then I'm going to um, edit some things inside that, that project. And then I'm going to fork the project into my personal account, the Spriggs J account. I'm going to make some changes to, the, to it in that repository. And then I'm going to ask for those changes to be accepted into the upstream, into the, into the um, groups project. So let's create that group first of all. So I'm going to go to project groups, your groups. I'm going to say a new group. And we're going to call this um, um, JTNG screencast. Oh, did this one already. So um, if you're used to working with GitHub, uh, GitHub doesn't show you the groups URL there. Uh, it just shows you the name of the group that you want to create. Um, case, case insensitive in the URL. Uh, so even though it's JTNG screencasts with the capitalizations there uh, and it's lowercase there, it shouldn't make a difference whether you do capitals or lowercases or whatever. Uh, description, uh, it's free text box, just type as much as you want in there. Um, I would say don't put too much text in there because that's it's not going to be rendered uh, very well there. You may as well have it in your readme, uh, which we'll come to in a second. You can add, add an avatar for your group. I wouldn't worry too much about that. And then there's visibility levels. So there's three levels here. Private, which literally means you have to add individuals into this group for them to be able to see the group and any projects that are inside it. Um, there's internal, which basically is like private in that you need to be logged in to the Git, GitLab instance to be able to see it. But once you're logged in, you can see the group and any projects that are inside it. And public means you don't need to be logged in at all. So most uh, repositories on GitHub will be stored either in public or private. And that's because they don't actually have this internal thing. And that's because GitHub public, the, the commercial, the, the github.com, um, there's so many people that are logged into github.com uh, that actually there's no difference really between a public group and an internal group. When your uh, GitLab instance is hooked up to something like uh, Active Directory or an LDAP service, uh, if you're using something like Radius or SSO, single sign-on to log into it, then that internal public thing becomes a bit more important then. Uh, and realistically, what I tend to see then is that you'll see more internal groups rather than private groups. You won't tend to see many private groups unless you're working on something that's confidential or something like that. But anyway, so I'm going to make this group public. So this means anyone that goes to this group at JTNG Screencasts on this URL, if it was still running when you see this video, would be able to find it there. So I'm going to click on Create Group. We create that group. Uh, and um, if I had a description, it would be here somewhere. Uh, and as it says, a group is a collection of several projects. So um, a project is, in GitHub terminology, like I said, it's a repository, a, a, a Git repository with issues and tickets and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to go to new project and I'm going to create a project. So if I was to be creating uh, this project under my username, in fact, if I do that, that's the, exactly the same as it would be as if I was if, if I wasn't creating it under this group. I want to create it under this JTNG screencast. So I'm going to call this uh, my demo. And again, you see this this name here. So when we create this group, it will be uh, this domain name slash JTNG screencast slash my demo. And again, we've got a description here, free text. You can put as much as you want in there. And then we've got the same visibility levels, public, private, sorry, public, internal, and private. So again, I'm going to make this public and I'm going to create the project. When you create the project, um, it tells you how to clone this repository into your local machine uh, or how you can, if you've got code in your own repository, how you can add this, this um, URL in as an, uh, an upstream a remote for that project. Um, essentially, if you're working on Git on your own stuff, um, you'll get used to doing this pretty quickly. Um, if this is the f if it's the first time you've done it, literally just copy and paste the um, the instructions that are here uh, based on whatever your actual paths are. What I'm going to do though is I am going to create a README file. So a README file is um, just a simple text file that's got some limited amount of uh, marked up text to say uh, what the um, what this file's about. 
Uh, and you can tell this is a markdown file because it ends in .md. So both GitHub and GitLab both handle markdown files. So I'm going to put a hash symbol, pound symbol for Americans, uh, Octalthorpe if you want to know the proper term for it. Um, and that means that it's level one he heading. If I put six of those, it means it's level six heading. But we're going to go with level one heading. I'm going to say uh, my demo project. Uh, this is a project showing how GitLab works. And I'm gonna, we've got this commit message here, add readme.md, that's fine. I could change this so it's not just, it's not readme.md, it might be, it might say something like, um, you know, um, uh, how to or install or something like that. But readme.md typically will get rendered when you go to the page for that. So I'm gonna click on commit changes. And so that's made a, a commit, a single commit based on my username and my account uh, and it's um, it's showing that this is the uh, commit text. So we've got this readme. And in fact, if I go back to the project overview, you'll see under the list of files here, we've got that readme MD. So uh, as a um, as somebody that's working on this file, ah, I need to I need to put a bit more detail in this. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to say edit. Uh, it is part of the screencasts series. Full stop. And again, here's our commit message. So I'm going to say update readme uh, with more details. Uh, and you can put as much text in there as you want. Um, it's a free text box. What you'll typically tend to see is that people say the first 70 characters here will actually be rendered in the the web interface to show you what the commit logs are. But when you actually click into that commit log, it will then show the rest of the commit message. Here is where we specify the branch we're going to be committing into. So I'm going to say that this is going to be um, uh, feature 001. And the reason why this is feature 001 is because uh, it's where we've been asked to add more details to the readme, for example. Uh, and I'm going to say commit changes. So the names of your branches will entirely depend on uh, how you work as a, as a developer. Um, if you are working on a project where you've got a large backlog of issues uh, and you're um, using those issues to drive your development of your application, uh, or perhaps you've got an external um, project manager, a uh, program um, product owner that's saying, oh, we want this thing to happen, we want that thing to happen. Um, that will drive how you name your branches. Uh, so for example, in some cases I've seen uh, just you know uh, a, a branch name called um, uh, something like uh, add feature X or um, uh, work out why thing isn't working. Um, other places you'll have issue numbers, so issue one two three four five. Sometimes you'll see um, feature requests. You'll see, um, uh, but they, anyway, these are all these are all ways of working with um, branch names. But so what we've done is. Um, when I've asked it to create this this um, branch, it's actually created a new merge request. So a merge request is, uh, you might know it as pull request in GitHub terminology. Uh, and a merge request or a pull request is where you're saying, I've made some changes to the code in a branch, whether that's in your own tree or somebody else's tree. I've made a change to this branch. Can you please include it in your branch? So, uh, I'm going to be asking if we can merge this feature, this branch, into master. So I'm going to say um, the title is basic. So this basically creates this this merge request as an issue, uh, and it says um, I would like you to um, view the content of this issue uh, and the code that I'm submitting with it. So this would say um, uh, user feedback indicates that the readme does not contain enough detail. This change seeks to address that. Something like that. Um, and GitLab's a bit different from GitHub in that um, GitLab says that it will automatically delete this branch uh, when the merge request is accepted, if you tick that. Uh, and you can also do what they call a squash commit. And a squash commit is where um, 
all of the things that are in your merge request. So every commit you make is then squashed into a single commit, listing all of the changes that happened in it. Um, some projects like that, some projects really don't. Um, and as I said, these two uh, options are not options that are in GitHub. So if you tend to work with, if you're using this as a way of kind of understanding how GitHub works, I'm hoping to do another video on that later, but we'll see what happens. Um, you can imagine that these two tick boxes are not are not available to you in GitHub. Um, because I am the admin of this um, this project, I get these three boxes here, assignee, milestone, and labels. Uh, milestones are when you're working towards a particular release cadence. So for example, if you are release, if you've got um, a milestone of version one, for example, you could assign that to the milestone version one. So this then needs to be reviewed with the context being that it would go into version one release, for example. Um, there are also labels, so things like, um, oh, there's no labels here. If this was a GitHub project, you'd have things like um, bug, enhancement, uh, feature, won't fix, things like that. You don't get those put in by default in um, GitLab, but that's fine. Um, and assignee, if you know the people that are on a project, then you can assign them. Uh, you can assign tasks to them. Again, this is on, these three here are only because this is a project that I'm an admin of. So I'm gonna submit this merge request. And as I said, this gets created as though it was an issue. So uh, in fact, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into issues and I'm gonna say um, issues. Um, uh, uh, feedback suggests that the authors not identified. So if I create an issue for this, you'll see that this is listed as issue one. Oh, interesting. Um, so this is something that's different from GitHub then. So GitHub uh, has merge requests effectively like issues. So in fact, all the numbering for issues uh, and the numbering for um, merge requests are they're continuous. So uh, you might have issue one Mer uh, pull request two, issue three, issue four, pull request five. That's the numbering, for example. Uh, in this, you've got a merge request one, which has got a special uh, naming convention, which is exclamation mark one. And you've got issues, which is, which you've got a naming convention of hash, and then one. Um, but so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back into here. I'm gonna say update readme with more details. Well, that looks like a good issue. Uh, user feedback, blah, blah, blah. yep, that looks good. I'm happy with that. Um, what you can do is you can um, review the code. You can see the commit message that's there. Uh, you can look at the commits and the changes, and you might even say, oh, actually, uh, I want to make a note that this is not uh, not good grammar, please fix, or something like that. Uh, and then do comment. So this then goes back in and it's now been added as a comment to that uh, commit. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm pretty much talking to myself here, but I can say, oh, um, it's fine. Uh, looks uh, good to match, for example. Uh, so we can have uh, issues inside this. So you can see here, that this is a resolved issue. Uh, and you can collapse it all and that's all good. So you can see here that there was some, some notes made here. Um, but either way, so we've got this um, uh, merge request that's here and yeah, I'm happy to go with that. So I'm gonna click on merge and merging it is effectively accepting the change uh, and committing it into the tree. So when I now go back to project overview, we will now see that it says this is a project showing how GitHub, GitLab works. It's part of the screencast series. Um, and if I look at the commits, we can see add readme, update readme, and merge. And when we click on the merge, we can then go through to the merge request. All good so far. This is now, I believe, closed. Yeah, merged. So that's all good. 
Um, now, taking that hat off for a second, I'm now a contributor to this project and I've looked at the issue, open issues and it says feedback suggests that authors are not identified. Oh, I can do something about this. So let's go back to project overview. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the fork button there. And that's gonna ask me where I want to fork this to. And I'm gonna say John Spriggs. So it's copying that, that repository, that whole repository, my demo, into my user account. So this, if you notice, this is now the URL here, Spriggs J, my demo. And it says it's forked from JTNG screencasts. So what can I now do? Let's go into readme.md and say edit. And I'm gonna put um, uh, uh, authored by John Spriggs. And in fact, what I'll also do there is I will do, I'll show off a little bit more markdown and I'll say HTTPS, john.spirit.gs, and I'll then go square brackets there, square brackets there, and do HTTPS, twitter.com slash John the nice guy. So what this does, if I click on preview, it shows you it turns these two into links because I've done that square bracket piece there. So I'm going to say um, resolving issue number one, adding authors. Now again, I can do the whole um, uh, branch name and then merge, merge that branch in. In fact, what I will do is I will do that. I'll do issue 001, issue one right there. Uh, and I'm going to start a new merge request with these changes. So I'm going to commit changes and it's going to open up the merge request box. Now I want to change where it is I'm merging that to. So it's not going from here to master. I want it to go to JTNG screencasts. And I'm going to compare branches and continue. So, um, like before, I'm going to say that this is making a change to this branch from this branch. I can, um, it was identified in issue one. And when we do that hash symbol and then the number one, it shows the um, issue that was uh, referenced there. So as a, it was identified in issue one, that uh, authors are not identified. This change fixes that and closes issue one. So let's submit that merge request. And it's now taken me back to this merge request box. This is now merge, merge request two. Uh, if I didn't like the look of this change, uh, I could click on close merge request, or I can put here, uh, this is rubbish. Uh, how dare you suggest this change? Or I can say, uh, fab, thanks. Uh, please can you tweak your change to include um, LinkedIn? comment. So <clears throat> as the user who's created this change, I would now get a notification that says uh, users just put this thing in fab. I can now go back to my source code uh, and say, oh, uh, there's a, a change that they want to make to this issue one. They want me to add LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, just quickly check what my LinkedIn is. Uh, so John Spriggs of Jess. Let's just quickly check that. So John Spriggs and it says here LinkedIn. So what's my LinkedIn address? There we go. Copy link location. So I'm going to edit this. How do I edit this? I go back into the file and I say edit. Uh, so I'm going to say Twitter. Uh, 
So now when I preview that, what's that going to look like? So it's John's Briggs, Twitter, LinkedIn, Fab. Okay, so updated README with new um, uh, request to add LinkedIn commit changes. So this has now been uh, update. This is updated to the change request. So let's go back to projects. Go to your projects. And this shows JTNG screencasts. So I'm now back into my demo in JTNG screencasts. And if I go into merge requests, resolving issues one, we can now see that there are two commits uh, which have made one change. So this now shows the change here. So it says authored, blah, 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 blah. So this is now the consolidated change that we're making. Right, I now want to merge this. Uh, so if I hit merge at this point, I will now have, if I go back to my uh, repository for a second, commits, uh, I would now have um, two code commits and one merge commit. And when I include this, I would then have these two, this merge request, and then another two uh, commits, and then another merge request. So let's have a look at what happens when we do that. Let's merge that. So this is now shows being merged. Let's go back to our commits. And we can see this now. So we've got these two code commits, this merge request, this merge branch, merge commit, sorry. Then we've got two more commits and then this merge branch here. So let's go back to the overview and we can see here now author by John Spriggs and some details there. Fab. Um, it's important to see that um, when we go back to our project overview, uh, click on that there, we can see that we've got this uh, branch here. Um, this uh, version that's down here um, has not been updated with the version that's in the master. So it's really important uh, to either um, oh, what am I doing? it's really important either to completely remove this uh, this branch, this this version, or to create a new merge request. that merges from Oh, okay, that's annoying. So it doesn't look like you can do that anymore then. Um right. In that case then I can't offhand see how you update your local branch with that. So instead what I will tend to do is I will tend to, once all of my changes have been merged in, is I will go to settings, go to advanced, and click on remove project. Uh, so this completely removes that branch. So in fact, if I now refresh that, that should now show that that project's gone. Um, and then if I need to do any more work, I'll then fork it off again. Um, so I think we've done everything that I wanted to show in GitLab. So I've introduced GitLab to you, shown you a little bit around it. I've not done a lot, but I've shown a little bit around it. Um, we've created a group, which is like an organization in GitHub. Uh, I've created a project, which is like a repository in GitHub. Um, I've created a file. I've updated that file, forked that file. Uh, for that repository into my personal tree uh, and then made some changes and then created a merge request to update that uh, and uh, I don't know whether I skimmed over it too quickly um, but if you have created a branch in your if you created a branch what GitLab will try and do is merge back to the primary branch 
whether that's master, if you call it development or whatever it is, but it will try and merge to your default branch. Um, if you've forked the repository to your local, to your personal repository, so a repository and a, a project under your username rather than under your project, um, and you do that merge request there, it will try and merge to your master not to the upstream master. And that's an important difference to, to be aware of. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything I want to show on this one. So like I said, I'm John the Nice Guy, John Spriggs. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, on LinkedIn, on Facebook as John the Nice Guy. Uh, and you can find my blog, uh, john.sprigg.gs. Uh, and just click through there. Uh, this video will be on both YouTube, uh, archive.org, and on library, so uh, it should be around for the foreseeable future. And uh, if you've got any questions, please give me a shout, and I'll do what I can to help. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.